Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. I've been getting a lot of questions about establishing and cold stratification in eastern gamma grass. Before we get started, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and hit that notification bell. Okay guys, the reel's at the other end of the field. So we put a gate there. Come on girls. Paige, Paige, no! We're in our native eastern gamma grass stand. It's not pure uh, eastern gamma grass. We have cup plant. Here's some cup plant. Here's bergamot, wild bergamot, black-eyed Susans. There's tick tree foil. We have plains coreopsis in here, purple cone flower. Our tick trefoil is actually a native legume. We have quite a bit of it in here. And we also put New England asters in here as well. So how do we establish a stand of Eastern Gamma grass? Well, it all starts with a year prior to, and this is my recommendation. There's a lot of different recommendations out there. My recommendation is, is to start the fall before or the year before if possible if you know where you're putting it and whenever you are figuring out where to put your eastern gamma grass eastern gamma grass likes wet soil so it can survive in waterlogged soil and, and matter of fact this eastern gamma grass field on this half of the field we had cattails growing in it we don't know we no longer have cat cattails growing but there was cattails growing in here and it can also be grown on dry land and do extremely well but it works good in wet wetland soils. So if you're having, if you want to establish one of your swamp areas, think about eastern gamma grass or even possibly switchgrass. I recommend starting a year before, starting with a cover crop. You go in and you burn it down, or if you're organic, you know, plow it and disc it and get it leveled up and prepare your seed bed as if you're planting oats, annual ryegrass, turnips, radishes, possibly some hairy vetch you know just a just a cocktail mix of of cover crops and go ahead and graze that throughout the year as you normally would with cover crops and i can do a video on that if you'd like and i probably will be doing one here pretty soon we have some cover crops that need grazed graze that throughout the year and then in the fall of the year if you don't want to start the year before i recommend starting at least the fall before the cover crops that we plant 
in the spring usually die through the winter time with the exception of annual ryegrass. What we'll do is we'll graze that for the final time of the year and usually that's in September, October sometime and then we'll come in with a winter rye mix such as winter rye, annual ryegrass, radishes, hairy vetch, maybe some winter peas depending on the location on the farm because a deer will walk 100 miles to eat one pea plant. So I have to be careful where I put, put my winter peas. In the spring of the year we'll graze that off and what we're doing by doing this is we're breaking the cycle. Say you have rushes or sedges or uh, goldenrod or just something growing there that you shouldn't, that, that's going to probably overtake your gamma grass, we need to start the year before. And another thing that I need to recommend is you need to, rec I recommend doing a soil, soil test because if your soils are way off, say your pH is really low or really high, you know, some of your natives might not do well. So you need to adjust, adjust your fertilizer and if nothing else, at least the pH in order for your natives to survive. And once you get those natives established, I don't really see a need for much lime and much fertilizer. Um, now on some farms, possibly, we're establishing our, our or we, get, we have our fall winter crop planted. And with that winter fall co cover crop in the spring of the year, we're gonna graze that probably twice. Now, we need to set a date whenever we're gonna plant our eastern gamma grass. Let's say the latest you want to probably plant eastern gamma grass, you plant it with corn basically whenever you'd plant your corn in your area is when you'd plant it, plant the eastern gamma grass. Now being that we're grazing the fall planting the cover crops in the spring, normally it's a little bit later in the latter half. In my area, um, a lot of guys will start planting their corn the 1st of May and we've planted corn as late as June 20th and done well with it. So usually the, the eastern gamma grass is planted on June 20th. So we need to back up six weeks. We projectively want to plant our eastern gamma grass and then we need to cold stratify it. This here's an example. One year I bought eastern gamma grass. It was 70% germination, 10% 10% germination with 90% hard seeded. And the hard seeded, it will ger germinate, but we gotta cold stratify it in order to get it to germinate with the rest of it. That's the thing with the natives that makes them so successful. You know, maybe only 10% will germinate right away, and then the rest of it lays dormant in the soil until the, the everything's just right for it to start growing. So we're breaking that cycle or that hard seededness with cold stratification. Okay, so we start six weeks prior to, and actually you wanna start before that, you wanna have your seed probably eight weeks prior to, and maybe even further back than that because usually a lot of places sell out of Eastern Gamma grass seed. Like this stand here, I planted it for grazing. I planted it at a rate of 16 pounds to the acre on 15 inch rows, and I planted it with a no-till John Deere 7,000 corn planter. So you want to keep that in mind. You can plant it on 30 inch rows and, and do okay with it, but you're maybe not going to have quite a thick a stand. It will take a little bit longer for it to come on. This stand here I believe is, I think five years old. I believe this stand is five years old. We grazed it the first year, we grazed it the second year. Um, whenever they tell you not to graze it the first couple of years, you know, if you're setting temporary fences, you can, you can flash graze it. But now back to the cold stratification. We already know that say 90% of our seed is hard seeded and we gotta break that with, break that germination, that hard seeded germination with, with cold stratification. And the way we do that with the cold stratification is we take our seed, we take a solution of 20% Clorox bleach in water we put our seed in a burlap bag, something similar to this that the squirrels probably haven't chewed. The squirrels got my burlap bag. You can see it's kind of bleached out from being covered in uh, Clorox bleach. We put your seed in a, in a 
burlap bag like this and you have your, your Clorox solution, your 20% Clorox solution. You take a garbage can or anything that will hold water and it will go up over top of your bags. I would recommend putting no more than say 40 pounds or 30 pounds in a bag because whenever you put water to it, it's going to get heavy. So what we'll do is we take that and we put it in, the, we soak it in the Clorox solution for a period of eight hours. Okay, so we have a 55 gallon drum or a garbage can. I use garbage cans because that's what I had. Now I have uh, cut off 55 gallon drums. And you'll soak that in the Clorox solution for an eight hour period. And after that eight hours, take that out of the Clorox solution and let it to drain. And I would recommend drain it on like uh, concrete or maybe put a plastic tray under it or something. You don't want it next to the soil because you don't want to recontaminate that. Because what you're doing is you're, you're sterilizing that seed to keep fungus from growing. Okay, and after we have that, that done, we have it drained out. We want to take it and put it in the refrigerator at 35 to 45 degrees. And we want to put it in there for six weeks. We want to check it every two weeks for mold or fungus and make sure that it's not sprouting. In two weeks, we'll open those bags up. Make sure your hands are sterilized because you can contaminate that with fungus and it will take mm. over your seed. So we open those bags up, we look, we make sure we don't have any fungus growing, check the outsides of the bags, make sure there's no fungus growing, put it back in the refrigerator. If it's starting to grow fungus, we want to soak it back, we want to put it back in our Clorox solution for another eight hour period. We'll take it out and we'll check that three times throughout the, or actually two times throughout the, the period of cold stratification, take it out of the refrigerator. Now it's going to take a pretty good size refrigerator. I have an old refrigerator that I picked up for free. Um, the board and it's goofy and it doesn't actually keep uh, everything perfect, but it works well for cold stratifying seed. So we'll take that out after a six week period. We'll take those bags and we'll dump it on a, on a black plastic sheet out, out in the open. And we want to do this the day we want to, or the day before we want to plant it. We'll take it and we'll put it out on a on a black plastic outside. And we'll get it dry. Once it's dried out, we bag it back up, and then we're ready to plant it. And whenever we go out to plant it, now you're gonna if you have a plated planter, usually it's planted with uh, a corn planter because of the seed. Let me find some seed here. Here's some seed here. We break that down and those seeds, pick a bunch here. We're going to reseed our, our field here with Eastern Gamma grass. Good thing, huh? Okay, here's some seed heads. Now we take, now these here, well, your seed, if you, whenever you buy your seed, it will be already pre-cleaned and, and run through a a deburring machine and it breaks these seeds up. And it'll be brown, it's not green. These are green because I just picked them. Okay, your seed will look something like that. And that will go through a no-till, or that will go through a John Deere 7000 finger pickup. Now, if you have a plated planter, you'll have to get the plates to the approximate seed size. Now, these are going to vary in size, so you want to pick out the largest seeds and pick that out. And we want to plant that at a rate of 16 pounds to the acre, and you can go as light as 8 pounds to the acre. Um, that's your discretion. I wanted a nice thick stand of eastern gamma grass, so I went with 16 pounds. It's kind of expensive, but if I manage this correctly, I should never have to plant it again. Okay, so after we get that planted, we can go through, before we plant it, we wanna go through with a burn down herbicide, or if you're organic, again, you wanna till it. Get your seed bed as if you're getting ready to plant corn. 
because whenever it comes up, it will come up and it will look like little corn. And actually, eastern gamma grass is a relative of corn. You got eastern gamma grass, tiacente, and corn. Um, actually, your corn has come from the tiacente, but the eastern gamma grass is closely related to, to see it tiacente. We get that planted, and it comes up. And myself, whenever I'm doing natives, I like to graze it. And, you know, one of the recommendations is possibly clipping it. Um, you can come in and clip it. Get the, the <clears throat> clip it just above the plant height. And those little plants will look like corn plants. Or you can flash graze it, what I call flash graze. And I'll come in and I'll set my temporary fences. And I may move those cows across the field. You know, we'll flash graze it. And we'll utilize those nutrients as versus trying to clip them off and use the cows to manage the undesirable plant populations. So that's pretty much how we establish eastern gamma grass. Eastern gamma grass doesn't have to be difficult. As with any of the native plantings, I recommend to dot your I's and cross your T's. Now, if you want to have a diverse stand like we, we have here, I would recommend getting your eastern gamma grass established and then come in with and drill or broadcast your cut plants and you know your broad your broad leaves and your native legumes. Okay guys, I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, you know, don't forget to don't uh, you know please comment. If you want a copy of the the cold stratification um, like that I use, shoot me an email, ancattle at gmail.com. I'll be glad to forward that to you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. You found that useful. And to my subscribers, thanks for asking for this video. I like making content that you guys can use. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. Check out in the link below to our new merchandise store. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.